Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And today is Sunday, which is the day that the Church of God, the people of God, gather together to worship and to glorify Him, to be instructed in His Holy Word, and of course, most importantly, to, to receive the Blessed Sacrament. The, our Lord's own body and blood, which you can only do by showing up and being in church. Yes, I know some of you live very far away and some of you are homebound and, and are, are unable because of illness to travel. But if you are physically able to do all those other things like go to school, go to church, I'm sorry, go to school, go to work, uh, go out and do recreational things, go to the zoo, all of those things, and thanks be to God for the society's opening that we can do that, then for the love of God, you should be in church receiving the blessed sacrament and worshiping with us, and I hope that you'll be here with us. Um, today is Sunday, as I said, and we are now in the second Sunday after Trinity. We've entered that long green season called Trinity Tide. Uh, and we will be, with a couple of exceptions here and there, uh, the vestments, colors, and the hangings will be green, and we'll be working our way through a, an ordered series of teachings about Jesus Christ, about who he is, and about the nature of God himself. And that happens through teachings and through miracles. Uh, I thought this morning we'd go ahead and take a look at one of the lessons that's assigned for morning prayer, which we'll read at 7.30 this morning, soon. Uh, and and because it is one of the ones that everybody knows, as soon as I start it, you're going to listen to it and go, ah, Boy, I've heard this one before uh, because we lovingly call it the wedding reading. It's the one that most people choose to have read at their wedding. It's from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now, we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now, I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. So, uh, obviously, we can see why this is such an attraction. And, and if you haven't figured it out, the, the word charity in a modern translation is the same word as love, right? Love never fails. Uh, the word charity comes from the Latin word caritas, which means love. Uh, and so, uh, don't get caught up on the King James English. Uh, it, it really is it's powerful and it's exact, and that's why we use it. Uh, even though we think of charities as being something giving to charity, a gift to charity is an act of love. That's where that uh, expression comes from, charity. Uh, but we're talking about the actual love itself. And, and, and actually, primarily, we're talking about love himself, right? Because God is love. But I, So we talk about all the different things that love is and isn't that we have in there. You can go ahead and read that and, 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 and do that again. But I want to get, get to this right here. Because at the very end, he says, for now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face, now I know in part, but then we shall know even as also I am known. So in other words, we have a vision and an idea and a concept of love. We have a vision and an idea and a concept of God because it's been revealed to us in Scripture. And we have a vision and an idea of what it means to be loved by God. But, you know, it's going to pale in comparison to when we're actually with him face to face. 
being in the presence of God will be so much greater than we can even begin to envision or imagine. To be in the presence of pure love. That's what we're learning how to do now. When we're learning how to love, even in difficult situations, we are learning to be in the presence of love. And that's who God is, right? Um, quite frankly, we see through it darkly, but then we shall see God face to face. So today's Sunday, and I do look forward to seeing you in church, God willing, and to receive the Blessed Sacrament.